Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on uh, Midnight Tales. Midnight Tales and I've got uh, the cover laid out mostly. So let me show you what I've done. Um, this is from the 12 by 12 signature page and of course there's two per pack and so I took that opportunity to fussy cut out um, and I actually just realized I'm going to trim this off. Um, the I guess she's a witch, yes. Um, and layer her. So I did something a little unusual here and I actually put two layers of chipboard so it's gonna stand up pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that so far. I just noticed I missed a piece here. So um, on the back side of this, and I need to trim a piece there. Well, I guess I'm not as ready as I thought I was. Um, on the back side of this, you're gonna have two, like I said, two layers of chipboard. are terrible scissors for this. There we go. That's pretty much hidden. A little bit more. And we are going to lay it um, just on top of this one. So if you look at the signature page, there's a frame or a couple of frames around this. I took all the frames away, put uh, black cardstock on it, and now I'm going to add the layer of the witch, and then I'm going to layer these three stamps, which I have also adhered uh, chipboard too, and in this case it's just a single layer of chipboard. And I don't use anything special here. This is chipboard that's left over from uh, building the, the album itself. Sorry, I must have been doing this in the dark because I see I missed a couple of things. So I'm just going to trim those off really quick, or as quick as I can with thick chipboard. Um, you could, of course, use an X-Acto knife. That would probably be a better recommendation to do this level of detail. There we go. And I think that that's probably going to do it. That's all going to go onto this pattern paper, just like so. So once you trim off the frames, you're gonna see that, um, excuse me, you don't have um, eight and three eighths, which is what you're gonna need to cover the outside of the book. So I've just created a mat for the cover. So the, I'm gonna lay it down in layers. I'm going to add this, then this, then I'm gonna add my dimension. And I need to change my glue about. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Really quick. All right, here we go. Again, this is the 12 by 12 uh, patterns of solids. Next up is going to be this. Again, you're going to take off the frame and add your black cardstock to the back, and so you'll have this nice little frame around it. And I'm going to center it.
I'm actually just lining it up with the pattern here. There we go. Okay. All right, now we've got these uh, chipboard pieces. Go ahead and layer these on. I'll probably add some, and if you can see, I trimmed this stamp down so that all the white is gone, so you can actually see the dimension here. And when I get done, it'll be a little bit more obvious. gonna go ahead and add our witch she's gonna go right here and again this is double layer chipboard so she's gonna stand off the cover uh, further than um, the stamps come back through it and try to ink my edges a little bit better. A couple of spots where it feels like it's sticking out a little bit. Okay, so now you can see got quite a bit of dimension. And then I have fussy cut these pumpkins out. And the cover just looked a little too simple for me with the midnight tails. It didn't pop out enough. So I am going to add strategically add my pumpkins right here and add some more orange to the cover. Um, I'm going to put some chipboard on the back of those, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I just want you to know that I trimmed these out also from the same cover and I'm going to set them aside. They will get added to the cover. That's what we're going to do for now here. And then this is um, also, I think this is also from the cover. have to look at the back side. Yes. Um, and this is what I'm going to use for the spine. I think that works out perfectly. It's a little bit too narrow, but I like it. Um, I looked at it by adding some mat around it and it just looked a little too busy. So I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. I inked my edges and this is going to be our spine. And then the back cover, I'm gonna bring in this pattern again. And I had, from when I trimmed out this piece, I had a piece that was big enough and I'm going to use that and this. And then they're both gonna be color blocked and I think I'm gonna go this way. And then I'm gonna add a little cluster of elements here. Um, either that or a sticker, I haven't decided. Now this is trimmed out to the right size, um, or it's just that scrap piece that was left over. Once I get this in, then I'm going to um, dry fit the other piece and then trim it to fit. And again, um, as with all my albums, I'm doing an eighth inch border. I mean a sixteenth inch border, which means everything is one eighth inch narrower and one eighth inch shorter. And then you get a sixteenth inch border. I just like it nice and tight. Uh, partially because I use black and black is so bold anyway. I don't feel like you need a big thick border. But it is definitely a preference. It's pretty 
pretty darn close. I'm going to take a tiny sliver off. And then ink it and we'll look at it again. How do we do? I think I like that. So let's ink it and get it in place. I am using powder puffs in mahogany. That's my go-to color. I think it goes with everything, Graphic 45. And all I really like to do is knock that white edge off. Um, I don't like to distress too much into the pattern because their collections look sort of distressed or antiqued anyway. So you don't really have to work too hard at distressing into the pattern. And you still get that extra depth that comes from inking the edges. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna add some elements here to sort of pull this all together. I don't know what yet, but I'll use stickers or chipboard or both, or die cuts, or all of the above. <laughs> That's in. So that is the base or the basics for the front, the cover, and the back. And um, I just noticed that the pattern does look a little bit directional. I'm not sure it matters that much though. I think some of it's my lighting. And there's the cover. So I will, like I said, probably um, put some dimensional pumpkins here. And I've got my ribbon set here, so I'm going to probably try to find a way to work in some of my ribbon as well. So that is it for the basics on the cover. I'm just going to burnish everything while I'm offline. And then um, when we get back together again, I'll add some more embellishments, including on the backside. And then we'll call that finished for at least the outside part. And then um, the second half of this video will include the inside liners and the page install. So I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, okay, so we're back now. We're gonna finish the inside liners of um, Midnight Tales. And so this is gonna be pretty straightforward. Um, sometimes I just keep these flat for large photos, but for this album, I have decided to put a pocket on the bottom and a flap on the top to hold everything into the pocket. So let me give you the measurements. This is, I know I wrote it down somewhere, four and three quarters deep by nine and three eighths uh, across. You're gonna score a half inch on three of those sides. So again, that's four and three quarters, score a half inch on the four and three quarters side, nine and three eighths, and you're gonna score a half inch. And then um, I do, I rotate it and then score the other side a half inch. So three of the four sides are gonna be scored to create your pocket. I don't do it online, but I do miter my corners just so they fold up a little bit nicer. And they're both going to be the same. So the patterns that I'm using, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. This is from Patterns and Solids. And this is actually the top banner of the signature page on the collection pack, the 12 by 12 collection pack. So I had used the image from the center on the cover and then I preserved um, the two toppers. And that's what that is. Oops, that's a little... Super sticky. Okay, just trying to make sure I'm out of my hinge area, and I am. Okay, so the bottom piece is gonna be the pumpkins. So let's go ahead and get that on, and then we'll add our flap, the top flap. Trying to work quickly because I don't want my air conditioner to come on again. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and the top flap is. 
five and three eighths, so it's five and three eighths. I'm sorry, five and three quarters, five and three quarters, and it is eight and three eighths across. So eight and three eighths across, five and three quarters. I'm gonna score half inch on the five and three quarter inch side, and that's gonna be your top down flap. I'm gonna turn it around so I can see my edges better. Oh, you know what, I forgot to put my magnet in. Ugh, darn it. I'm gonna have to lift that up and figure it out. There we go. All right. So we are going to need a magnet in here, and I'm going to figure out how to get that underneath in a minute. I'm going to have to lift it, I think. Anyways, we're going to repeat this process over on this side, and I will take a break because I don't have my liners picked out just yet. I think I'm going to place this first. because. That's where it looks like it needs to be. Okay, it doesn't need to come down too far. So I'm using, um, this is a spatula that I use for painting. And I like it because it's really thin. Now, there are spatulas that you can use to lift paper that are made for that. But I found that the spatulas for painting are thinner. So you can get underneath here, lift your glue up, and get your... Um, magnet in without without marring your paper. Now once you have it opened up, then to push the magnet in, you really do need to use your bone folder because it's magnet. Um, it'll want to at attach to the spatula. So now I've got that pushed in, so the next thing I want to do is see where it landed and make sure it's far enough away from the edge, and it's actually a little too deep, that um, that I can get uh, my designer paper all the way around it. So it's a little too deep, so I'm gonna use my spatula, see if I can't get it to magnetize and pull it back out a little bit. Of course, without tearing the paper is the goal. There it is. So it attached to the metal, so that just made it easy for me to pull it back out. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. So, now I need some tape. The other thing that I'm, the tape softens the edges, but the other thing is because it's not beveled, it's kind of a harsh edge, that's what makes it hard for the paper to go over it. So the tape also is an additional adhesive to help hold your paper down over that sort of bubble. Now the next thing I need to do is make sure that this is glued in place so that the magnet doesn't continue to float around. So I'm gonna put some glue in there. I'm gonna let that set for a second because it's very wet, probably a little too wet. And then I'll push it from the edge back so that the glue goes toward the center instead of toward the edge as much as I can. I want to let that dry pretty good because um, I don't want to accidentally glue my pocket closed. So I'm going to hold that for a second. Then we'll go ahead and install uh, the pocket on this side and we'll, we'll make sure that we put our magnet in before I put my designer paper on. Okay, again, the pocket on this side is four and three quarters. 
by nine and three eighths, four and three quarters by nine and three eighths. And it needs to be that size or smaller, otherwise you're gonna get hung up in the hinge area of the book. There we go. Okay, now we need to put our, our top flap on and then we'll locate our magnets. The top flap is five and three quarters, five and three quarters score half inch, and it is eight and three eighths wide. It's pretty dry, but I'm just gonna give it a few more minutes. Okay, I'm lining up the side to side edges so that we have a nice continuous line. Okay, that's in. And then uh, the next thing is we're gonna locate our magnets. I think I'll put it up here first. Does the day go? Okay, that's in. I just panicked. I I hadn't checked the, the cover to make sure I was putting it in right side up. And I was, but that's, I wasn't sure at first. Okay, so that is in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the top. So I've got this band that's going to go across here, and then we're going to trim this piece to fit. And again, this came from the uh, first page in the 12 by 12 collection pack. It is the header for the first page. And I think it made a really neat band. Or border. For this flap, I think it looks pretty cool. or treat, it says. If you want to use something else as a trim piece, this is one and uh, three quarter inches if you want to use a different pattern. Or you could just do solid green. I thought this made it look a lot more interesting. Okay, so the last thing is this green piece on both sides. Well, it's not the last thing, it's the last thing for a side and it needs to be trimmed to fit. So I'm gonna mark it, trim it and install it. Oh, 
I'm so sorry about that. I'm gonna pause, uh, do my marking, and I'll come back when the air conditioner goes off again. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and the air conditioning's off, and I figured out the pieces that I'm gonna use on the inside, so let's go ahead and get those down. This is from the Patterns and Solids. It is black, and I'm running short of my um, 12 by 12 panels, which I need to cover the inside and outside of the book because the eight by eights um, are too narrow. So I'm, ha I'm gonna have to do a little bit of color blocking up here um, to make it stretch. Whoops, it doesn't wanna go in the pocket. I'm making a mess, sorry. There we go. And we'll just wiggle it down a little. Get it out of the hinge area. And we're done. Okay, that's it. So we're gonna do that on both sides. Hopefully this will go in a little smoother. And I forgot, I put uh, glue all the way down, but usually on my leading edge or the edge that's going inside the pocket, I don't put glue on it and it makes it easier to wiggle it into place. And because it's inside the pocket, there's really no risk of it lifting. Um, I've never had that happen, so. All right. Looks like it can go up just a smidge more. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now I don't have a big enough piece to cover this. I'm going to use this black piece. Um, so I'm going to offset it by adding these two trim pieces on the outside edges. And it looks like I forgot to ink them. Ink them. And these are two inches wide. And it could be any scrap that you have that you think coordinates across. And then once we get these into place, I'm going to trim the, the black the balance of this to fit. So we'll place the smaller piece first and then measure out what's left. close it and get the, the green pieces put on. So I trimmed these and inked them while I was away. Okay, so the covers are completely done. So let's go ahead and measure this side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure this side also and make sure. I lost my pencil mark. You know what? I don't think I don't think it's going to be wide enough. I might have to change my strategy. Let's 
Let's see where that is. Hopefully it's at the six inch mark and that'll be just perfect. We're splitting it in half. It's a little over, shoot. That's right. Yeah, it's not gonna be wide enough. Let me think, or tall enough. Okay, I'm gonna have to come up with an alternate plan because this isn't quite wide enough. So one of the things I can do is put another orange strip on either side and then just put the black in the middle. But I have to see if I've got enough of this uh, to work around. So I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I had to stop because the darn air conditioner came on. So while I was away, I went ahead and glued in another two inch strip. So there's two strips on either side um, that are two inches wide. And then I trimmed this out to fit. And um, I, I recommend actually laying it in and trimming it to fit because depending on how far away from the edges you got, it's going to change um, how it looks. So you'll get the best um, results from measuring it to fit. Let me take this tape backing off. And then we are done with uh, the inside liners. So the next time we sit down, um, we'll install the pages. Actually, I might do that in a separate video so I can go ahead and get this one uploaded to YouTube. Last project, I waited and uploaded everything at once and it took a ridiculous amount of time. I think I probably spent 14 hours uploading um, and things just kept getting hung up. So I'm trying to do a little at a time this time so I have less frustration. <laughs> and the rest of my pages aren't ready so we can't do the install right now. They're coming along, but they're not ready. So I think this turned out nice. We're going to put stuff in our pockets. I'm gonna leave this in here for me as a reminder to create um, some inserts for these pockets. They're held closed by the magnets. As you can hear, I love that click. And I think these pockets turned out beautifully. I think this made the whole thing right here. So uh, again, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the installation on this video or a different one, but that's the end of the liners, okay? Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, back soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I've got tape on the hinge here and I had my book upside down, which is no good. <laughs> Luckily, I was looking at this, and I've got my pages lined up, and we're gonna go ahead and install the pages. And then I'm gonna go over, I did some further embellishing on the cover, and I did it offline, so I'm gonna go over that in detail as soon as I get my pages installed, okay? So, let's see. And also offline, I, um, you know what, before I do this, I'm gonna take pictures of, of these pages. It's so much easier when it's out, outside the album. So I'm gonna stop and do that. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I started actually installing this before I turned my recorder back on. Um, if by any chance you ever missed this part, um, if you go back to any of the bass album builds, we have a whole playlist of different size bass albums. I go over the installation of the pocket page um, in every one of those videos. Um, I changed my process. I used to install my pocket page and then decorate it and I changed my process um, based on um, really what people preferred was to decorate the pages outside the album and then install them. So um, if you look at a base album build, it'll show you how to install it, but I recommend that you wait to do the installation until it's decorated because then you're working on a flat surface or a flat er surface. Okay. So I slip the uh, hinge inside the pocket page and then I reach in with my pick tool, which I can't live without and pull out my tape. And most of the time it comes out in a single piece. And then I press my page. So the other thing I'm doing when I lay it down to one side or the other is I'm looking for uh, consistent margins all the way around the pocket page. The straighter your hinge goes in, the better your pages go in. But if your hinge goes in crooked, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can straighten out, um, you can visually straighten out the pocket page by just torquing it on the hinge and laying it down, maybe not to a perfect right angle to the hinge, but a right angle to the page. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I've had to do that. <clears throat> Okay, so that's in. So again, I'm looking for that consistent border, top to bottom. If it was off, you could slightly slip it, you know, further off one end of the hinge than the other. In this case, it looks like it's pretty good. Looks like I got my hinge in pretty straight. Darn it, I hate it when my tape tears. It's just a little, little piece in there. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out for me. Wow, it's really stuck in there. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna double check my margins again because I piddled around with it so much. And it looks good. So the one side you have to spend a little more time on than the other because once it's attached, it you don't really have to fuss with this, this side at all. our last page. Now I am going to embellish the book a little bit more but I'm going to do that offline. Um, I'm probably going to put uh, you know a small ephemera journaling card here or something just to make it a little bit more interesting but I'm going to do that offline so you'll see that in the walkthrough you're not going to see it uh, as part of the page construction. Just FYI. opposite way. If you pull at an angle, um, it's less likely to tear um, than if you pull uh, straight up. Not always, but most of the time. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what I did on the cover. Um, so I think the first time we got together, I did show you when I did the cover, I showed you that I popped the witch up. So she's on two layers of chipboard, and then the stamps are also popped on a single layer of chipboard. I added this uh, ribbon, which was part of the bundle. You'll probably get an alternative ribbon because we kind of ran through all of the first couple of ribbon choices that we had. I think the newest ribbon that we have, I think I might like it even better. So the other thing I did down here is right here is where it said Midnight Tales. I fussy cut some of the pumpkins out and layered it on top because the Midnight Tales was very dark and it just looked very heavy on this corner. So it was very dark in the corner and then Midnight Tales was kind of, I can't remember, I think it's in orange. But anyways, this whole corner looked very heavy and I think this makes it look a little bit more balanced by adding the pumpkins and this ribbon. And it may not come across in the video, but this ribbon is um, a pretty rich gold. And I noticed when I photographed it the other day that it, it looked more yellow than gold, but it's, it's a pretty rich gold. 
and I think it looks good with the moon and then the yellows that are also in the pumpkin and the lantern. And then I've got two pieces of filigree. If you buy the bundle from us, you're gonna get some filigree, but we're gonna put an alternate filigree piece in here that um, doesn't come into the corner so far. Um, and it'll look just as good, if not better, actually. And then, of course, I went over this with you. And then the other thing I did uh, offline was I added this piece of chipboard and this piece of chipboard. And then these are two die cuts uh, from the die cut pack. And I kind of um, curved the wings and tacked them down on the edges and tacked down the center. So you've got some dimension on these bats which I'm not sure how much that's coming across because I know these plaid patterns um, are play, wreak havoc when you're videotaping and photographing. So hopefully you can see that, not sure. But that added just a little bit more interest here. So again, I think from the last time we were together, I added the um, pumpkins, the ribbon, the boo chipboard piece, and these two pieces of filigree. So not a huge change, but a little more interest. And like I said, I think it created a more balanced overall cover. So... Thanks for tuning in. We've got our pages in, and that's it for the cover um, and inside liners and the page installation. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Sorry about that. I had to stop because the darn air conditioner came on. So while I was away, I went ahead and glued in another two-inch strip. So there's two strips on either side um, that are two inches wide, and then I trimmed this out to fit. And... Um, I, I recommend actually laying it in and trimming it to fit because depending on how far away from the edges you got, it's going to change um, how it looks. So you'll get the best um, results from measuring it to fit. Let me take this tape backing off. And then we are done with uh, the inside liners. So the next time we sit down, um, we'll install the pages. Actually, I might do that in a separate video so I can go ahead and get this one uploaded to YouTube. Last project, I waited and uploaded everything at once and it took a ridiculous amount of time. I think I probably spent 14 hours uploading um, and things just kept getting hung up. So I'm trying to do a little at a time this time so I have less frustration. <laughs> and the rest of my pages aren't ready so we can't do the install right now. They're coming along, but they're not ready. So I think this turned out nice. We're going to put stuff in our pockets. I'm gonna leave this in here for me as a reminder to create um, some inserts for these pockets. They're held closed by the magnets. As you can hear, I love that click. And I think these pockets turned out beautifully. I think this made the whole thing right here. So uh, again, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the installation on this video or a different one, but that's the end of the liners, okay? Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, back soon.